Good morning and welcome to Periscope. Thank you for watching the replay. Don't forget you can definitely tap the screen even on the replay to give me hearts. So good morning everybody. Thanks for hopping in so quickly. You guys are awesome. Happy, happy Thursday. We've made it over the hump of Wednesday. Good morning Angie. Good morning Miss Williams. Good morning Nikki. If I don't know you, let me know your name and where you're scoping in from so that I can be sure to tell you. Good morning. Hello Karen. Hello Katrina, thank you guys for joining. So if you follow me on social media, um, my handle is Clarissa Joy, J-O-I, just like here on Periscope, then you already know the topic for this morning. Good morning, good morning, ladies. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So if I don't know you, let me know your name and where you're scoping in from. And if you haven't connected with me yet um, on social media, I'm on Instagram, uh, Twitter, as well as I have a Facebook fan page and my handles on all of those platforms is Clarissa Joy, J-O-I. Yes, yes, yes. So if you follow me, you already know the title for this morning. It's simply what is stopping you? What is stopping you? Hello, Chris from Tampa, Florida. My brother lives um, very close to Tampa, Florida. I love, love, love that area. Um, so good morning, good morning. Um, make sure if you're not following me yet, you go ahead and tap on the icon at the very bottom right of your screen so that you can follow me and get instant notifications as soon as I go live. Um, thanks, Angie, for sharing. Yes, if you know anyone that is uh, has been abandoned, that is um, separated, that is divorced, make sure, make sure that you share this broadcast with them. It's going to be awesome today. I'm so happy you guys are in the room with me. Yay! Thank you for inviting your followers. Also, if you're brand new to Periscope and you're wondering about those hearts, you give hearts by simply tapping on the screen. That's how you give hearts. So I don't ask for them for free. If I say anything at all that educates you, empowers you, or causes your thinking or actions to evolve, give me hearts, okay? So sure, go ahead and ask a question. Good morning, Jania. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you all for joining. You guys are so, so awesome. Let's get as many people in the broadcast as we possibly can. Share, share, share. You know, now um, uh, Periscope allows you to share on Facebook, on Twitter, um, as well as on um um, sharing the link. So thank you guys for that. So thanks for hopping in guys. You guys are awesome. Um, don't forget you can check out previous Periscopes on my website. That address is chickchatcc.com. So if I don't know you, I'm Clarissa. Thanks for hopping in this morning. I'm in Memphis, Tennessee, and I am a live blogger here on Periscope every single morning, Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Hi, Mandy. Um, I also am a motivational speaker as well as an author. So so yes, I have a brand new website and launch that's going to happen in just a short while. I cannot wait to share those things with you guys. So stay tuned, stay connected with me so that you can see. So let's go ahead and jump in for this morning. The question is, what is stopping you? Okay, so you're thinking, hmm, stopping me from what, right? What is stopping you from success? What is stopping you from the thing that keeps you up at night? Hello, what is stopping you from your wildest dream? What is stopping you from anything that you would like to accomplish in your life? Your purpose, your destiny, your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, dot, dot, dot fill in the blank, right? What is stopping you? So this morning, I'm going to share with you, you know how many, three things, three things, yes, that was stopping me um, after I was married, I was abandoned. Um, I had a one-year-old at the time that I was abandoned. My daughter was just an infant and then separation and then divorce, right? So there were three things that stopped me. Hello, hello. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. Thank you guys for the hearts. That's so sweet. So let me share with you Three things that was stopping Clarissa. So you may have your own three things, but whatever those things are, today, today, I want you to identify them. Hey, Marchette, I want you to identify them today. Okay, guys? So let's hop in. How do you show me you're ready for number one? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Type a number one. There you go. Type a number one in your comment box if you know, okay? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really into the MLM fad. I'm not into that. So I don't know. I haven't followed it. So it looks like you guys are, are ready for number one. I see your comments. Number one, the first thing that was personally stopping Clarissa, the first thing was shame. 
Mm -hmm. This isn't one thing that um, that's written about in, in a lot of the books. It's not something that people openly or transparently share with others. But number one, first and foremost, my first blocker. Yeah, I'm calling them blockers this morning. I did the red, the red uh, symbol. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. So the first thing was shame. Why was I shame? Because I had this huge wedding, over 300,000, I'm sorry, over 300 people were there. It was wall to wall, people were standing, huge dress, huge this, huge that. And all of a sudden, I felt like a failure, right? My marriage was over. Not only that, I um, am the daughter of a preacher. So as a preacher's kid, right, the, the eyeglass, right, the magnifying glass is always on you. So that was another part of my shame. Not only that, now here I am. I've become not only a statistic because I've had a failed marriage, but a statistic because now I'm a single mom. Mm -hmm. So no one was looking at me as if, oh, she was in a marriage that didn't, that didn't work. It was the effect that seemingly was, wow, this chick has just gone out there, had some baby, and now she's out there on her own. No one knew the background. No one knew the story. So walking into a, a store, I felt like everyone was looking at me as this person that was just promiscuous and out there doing whatever and just had this kid, a one-year-old, now by myself. Mm -hmm. So I was also shamed because I was in a professional um, environment. Hey, AJ, good morning. I'm also, I also work in, a, in corporate America, so a very professional environment. So, you know, most of the people around me are probably um, at that time were old enough to be my parents, if not old enough to be my grandparents. Um, they all had uh, children and marriages and seen the happy American life, the dream life. And here I was now, I go from have a great job, have a great family, um, built a home together, to now, here's my baby and we're alone. Yeah, so to think to go from that American dream to bam, a statistic. Yeah, I became a statistic overnight, literally overnight. So think guys, that was number one, first and foremost, my blocker. My blocker was my own personal shame. When I walked in the store, into a store, did anyone care who I was? Probably not. Did they care if I was single, abandoned, um, divorced? Probably not. Did they care um, where I came from or that my father was a preacher and a pastor? Probably not. But it was my reality, right? So some of you have realities this morning that may not be true. Think about that. Some of you too may have realities this morning that you're living in that may not necessarily be true. I want you to simmer on that for a moment. So again, that was my first blocker. Show me that you're ready for number two. Let's go to number two. If you're just hopping in this morning, we're talking about what's stopping you. I'm sharing three things that stopped Clarissa, that were blockers for Clarissa after abandonment, after a separation, after divorce. So my things may not be your things, but I know you have some because we're all human. Flesh, blood, bones, you have some. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, looks like you guys are ready for number two. Make sure you've shared this broadcast with your followers, guys. Okay, number two. Number two was, this is a tough one for me to admit, but it's so true. Number two was ego. Mm -hmm. My personal ego, my um, self-righteousness, mm -hmm. and some may even call this pride. So whatever label you want to put on it, it's the feeling of how in the world did this happen to me? How in the world did I get to this point? When did I make the wrong turn? Okay, how on earth of all people that travesty could have happened to, why me? Yeah, so that was in my period of sulking into my situation, sulking into what appeared to be right then, but it really wasn't my future. That was my period of time of, of singing, woe is me, I'm a victim. Had I been done wrong? Absolutely. Was it the end of the world? Absolutely not. 
No. So even though we're human, even though we have emotions and feelings that sometimes may not go right, that sometimes may go south, right? I don't want you to stay there. I don't want you to soak there uh, because that's not the end of the world. It's not the last day of your life. You're still breathing. So as long as you're still breathing, you have another chance. You have another opportunity to reach toward your destiny. Yes. So number two, my number two was my ego. My big fat ego was my own personal self-righteousness of woe is me. I'm a victim. How did this, how did this happen to me? Yeah, I was upset and angry with God. I'll be transparent. Yes, I was. Yeah. After all that I've done, after I've served you, after I've done what I thought was right, after I am a tax paying citizen, um, of our great country, after I paid my tithes, after I, you know, attend church regularly, after I'm good to my neighbor, after I'm nice and polite, after all those things, Nikki said, that's normal. After all those things, yet and still, travesty knocked on my door. Mm-hmm. Uninvited. Yeah, I like the Dixie Chicks. They talk, they have a song about that. Uninvited. Did heartbreak come in? Uh-huh. I didn't invite it into my life. It just came. What? Hi. Thanks for joining. Good morning. Okay. So we've talked about number two. Lord have mercy. You're telling my business. <laughs> I love it, AJ. I'm just being real, guys. It took me years to get to this point. I'm saying it without crying. I'm talking about it without feeling hurt. I'm talking about it without being in a low, destitute place because I'm free now. I'm free from it. So this is a part of my personal a testimony, my personal ministry to others to share. Everything in our life happens for a reason. So I have embraced, yeah, I've embraced the reason that this happened and I don't mind sharing. Okay, so just keep listening. You'll get it in a second. So that was number two. Have you shared this broadcast with your followers before we get to number three? Your strength is amazing. Let me tell you this, Miss Williams. It's not my strength. Um, this has been a, oh, thank you. You're welcome for my transparency. This has been nothing but the Lord. This has been nothing of Clarissa. I'm telling you, I did a, a previous Periscope on suicidal thoughts, right? I was even suicidal at a period of time during my pregnancy. Um, so this is nothing of Clarissa, right? This is, this is like, you have no idea. You have literally no idea. The thoughts, the negativity that I have felt, that I have, um, it, it, it was just very, it, there were some very, very deep, dark, lonely, awful, points of my life during this time okay so hey whatever life went on i'm here i'm still still standing and i am excited about it okay so let's hop to number three guys this is the last one on the list thank you guys for joining if you're just joining the broadcast this morning we're asking the question what's stopping you what is stopping you from from getting from gathering from obtaining your dreams your goals your destiny your purpose your future what is stopping you i'm sharing with you three things that was stopping clarissa after abandonment separation and divorce so we're on number three i love the heart flow guys thank you for the heart flow it also lets me know we're still connected <laughs> You know, Periscope is a little glitchy these days. Okay, number three. Number three. Number three is finances. Oh, thank you, Mandy. Number three is finances. So, again, you guys know me. I'm as real as it gets. So, a lot of people, they give you the God side of it, right? They give you the faith aspect of it, right? I'm going to give you the side of it that's more so about faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Yes. Okay. So yes, God is able. Yes, God um, is willing to do. But guess what? Sometimes he's waiting on us. Yes. Hey, Robin. Sometimes he's waiting on us. So number three is simply that finances. So right. Remember, guys, I became an overnight statistic. Yeah, I go from living the American dream to now I am a statistic. I'm alone. I'm now divorced. I'm single. I have a one-year-old infant, right, that's looking to me to be her support. And I feel just beaten. I feel um, bewildered. I feel unworthy to be anyone's mom, unworthy to even be on the face of the earth. Yeah. 
but that's okay. So number three was finances. I had to get myself together, right? You're singing the song of my life. Thanks for sharing. I have been stopping myself, but not anymore. That's awesome, Katrina. I'm so happy to hear that. So number three is finances. I don't care how much um, faith you have, how much um, all of the godly part of the stuff that we talk about every single day, without finances, some things are not possible. Okay, without finances, the Bible even tells us that men will give into our bosom. Give what? Finances. You need finances to live. Yes, you do. Your um, your landlord doesn't want to hear you speaking in tongues on the first of the month. They want their rent. They want their mortgage. No. I just did a scope, a scope on this topic yesterday. Totally can relate. That's right, Pinky Me. Yeah, Bank of the uh, Bank of America was the person that had my mortgage of that brand new three thousand um, foot square foot house that my husband and I had built together, and he was now gone. And I was completely abandoned. Did Bank of America want to hear about um, my God, my Holy Ghost? No. They said, "Do you have your mortgage payment?" My, my car, uh, my car note, I was driving a Mercedes at that time. Uh-uh, uh Mercedes-Benz of Memphis, they didn't want to hear about my God. They wanted that car payment. Yes, they did. So I'm telling you guys, it's kind of hilarious. And I'm telling you, this is from years and years of an evolution of Clarissa. So I can say this in a hilarious tone now because looking back, I understand where I came from. But it's not a joking matter, right, at all when you were in the midst of it. So there were lots and lots of um, lonely nights, um, teary nights. And another thing I'll say, um, while tears kind of somewhat help us emotionally, they don't move God. What moves God? Your faith, your faith, your resilience, your dependence on him. Yeah, so stop crying about it and do it. Stop crying about it and do it. So these are the three points for this morning, guys. I love, I love, I love the hearts. Even if you share now with your followers, they can still watch the replay. Oh, thank you, Robin. You guys follow Robin. She's like my my secret mentor, she doesn't know it, but I she mentors me from afar through Periscope. <laughs> so this morning, we're talking about what's stopping you. What in the world is stopping you from getting your dreams, from obtaining your goals, your destiny, your purpose, your future? Stop looking at your right now. Hey, mommy, my mommy just joined. Hey, um, stop looking at your right now and sinking and sulking in your right now. Okay, so remember, as long as you're breathing and you're breathing because you're watching this periscope, you have another day, you have another opportunity, you have another chance at living. Yes, you do. So I don't know what's stopping you. I'll share with you three things um, that's stopping me. Oh, thank you, Robin. 100 hearts, everyone. Um, good morning, Dee Dee from Richmond, Virginia. Um, so I don't know what's stopping you guys but I've shared with you three things that are stopping me right so whatever stopping you you firstly need to identify it today so that you're aware of it you can conquer it and you can get over it mm -hmm. change your thoughts change your word that's right change your world I think you're saying that's absolutely right so my number one was shame I want you guys to get over the shame I thought those people were looking at me and my baby like we were this and that they didn't have a care in the world about me. They weren't looking at me. They were shopping in Walmart. But here I am in my complex at that time wondering, is everybody wondering how I got this child and I'm by myself? Did they actually know I was married at the time? Who cares? No one cared. Yeah. So let's get over our right now, our own paranoia, right, of what we think others are thinking about us. Because most of the time, they're not even thinking about us. They're shopping. They weren't thinking about Clarissa. My number two, remember guys, my number two was um, my ego, my own ego, my own self-righteousness, my own inner pride. Yeah, what was that about? It was about me saying, I thought I did so good in life. I thought because I was a good girl. I thought because I went to college. I thought because I went to church every Sunday. I thought because I paid my tithes. I thought because my father was the pastor that I was exempt of heartache. I was exempt of something bad. I never thought I'd be abandoned. Like he literally walked out of the door and never came back. Mm-hmm, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was exempt 
Good morning, Betty. I was, thought I was exempt of any of this travesty ever coming into my life. So guess what, guys? That was ego. And I had to recognize it. I had to call it out for what it was because that's exactly what it was. None of us are exempt. Look at Job. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about a perfect and upright man that lost everything? What? Did he deserve that? Nope. But did God allow it? Yes. He said, have you tried my servant Job? But anyway, guys, number two, number two was my own ego. I had to get over my ego. I had to get over my self-righteousness and I had to get over my pride. Thanks, guys. Amen. I had to get over those things because guess what? It can happen to any of us. It can happen to any of us. Hey, Sister BB from Freedom Church. Yeah, that's my church member. If you guys missed it, Sunday, our church got renamed. We're no longer the Deliverance Church. Now we're Freedom Church. So we're excited about that too. So, hey, so I got over my ego. I got over my self-righteousness and I had to get over my pride. Mm -hmm. Guess what else pride had me doing? I wouldn't ask others for help. I needed help, but I thought they know that I'm single now. My family knows that I'm alone. My family knows I have a one-year-old. Why aren't they asking me to babysit? Why aren't they asking me if I need a hand? That was pride, guys. If you need help, you need to open your mouth and ask. Mm -hmm. And guess what else? When most of us are so strong um, before these things happen to us in our lives, right? Because we're so strong on the outside, it looks like we have it all together. So why would anyone offer assistance? You look like you have it all together. You look like you have it figured out. You look like you don't need anyone's help. Mm -hmm. But that's pride, guys. I needed help and I didn't want to ask because of pride. And number three, number three, type of three in the comment box. Number three, the third blocker, the third hindrance, the third thing that was helping, that was stopping me. Hey, Miss Williams. Oh, this, this is help um, me, Lord, help. <laughs> Sorry about that. Number three, I do that. Wow. We all have done it or are doing it. So number three, guys, number three is finances. At the end of the day, we need finances to live. We need finances to, to live. And the Bible tells us that it's ours. So don't think that being in a destitute state, being in a lowly state, um, solidifies your holiness it is, or solidifies your, um, your religion or your religiosity. That's what it really is. It doesn't. That's not where we're supposed to be. It's not his plan for us. And you shouldn't accept it. No, when I remove this um, this feeling of, you know, the third blocker finances from my life, my finances began to grow and grow and grow. But it's all in what you think. Finances, open our mouth and ask the great supplier. Yes, ask him. There's no shame in asking him. So on time, this deserves all caps. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Miss Williams. So true, Mandy. So that's right, guys. Take the blinders off your finances. Stop being afraid to ask for finances from the supplier. Yes, he has it available for us. You just have to simply ask. Mm -hmm. After that time of abandonment, I think it was maybe, oh, I have to go back and look at my records. You have records um, over, um, I think, probably two or three years. My ink, maybe three years, I'm thinking, doubled. It doubled. Mm -hmm. It doubled after I was abandoned. Yeah, but it wasn't until I removed, I removed the cap off of myself, right? After I stopped feeling, maybe this is because um, this is his plan for me. But that's a trick of the enemy. Don't buy into it. Um, don't soak in it because it's not his plan. It's not right. We get into the scriptures. Um, the riches are stored up for us. Is stored up for us, even when we're doing good and whatever has happened, right? Dot, dot, dot. You fill in your whatever. It's still for us to have. So you need finances, guys, and you need to go after it. I declare this for me and all who are going through this. Amen. That's right, Miss Williams. Declare it over yourself. You guys know I've talked about my affirmations that I say over myself every single morning, even throughout the day, or even when I recognize myself going into a negative place. Yeah, recognize it. Removing the cap off myself, we are blocking ourselves. Awesome. That's right. We are blocking ourselves. Even after that time, oh, here's a good one, guys. Even after that time, guess what? I didn't ask my employers for rate for my from my employer for raises or for increases. I got called into the office and was told, hey, this is what we've done for you. What? 
No, I didn't beg for it. I didn't say, hey guys, I've done these 30 awesome things. Will you give me a raise because I've been abandoned? No, I didn't. I didn't, honestly. Pray to the supplier. Again, men will give unto your bosom. It's in the word. You have not because you ask not. Ask the Father for it. He can supply all of our needs. We did that scope last week. So yes, so those were our three things for today. So I want you to think about accept the challenge. Type accept in the comment box if you will today recognize your blockers. You may have one. You may have five, you may have 10, I don't know, but I'll share with you three of Clarissa's blockers today, okay? So do you accept today's challenge? What is the challenge? Think about what's stopping you from success? What's stopping you from reaching your dreams? What's stopping you from getting from getting what's yours? Crying for joy now from such confirmation, oh my gosh, yes, yes. Accept it, God's woman, I like that. Accept it, Mandy, accept it. Until you accept it, it cannot happen. So stop stopping yourself. Stop being your worst um, critic. Stop being your worst nightmare. Accept it today, Don. Yes, accept it, Katrina, yes. So I'll be back on this afternoon. You guys are typing accept, but I'm gonna hold you accountable. This afternoon, I'll be back on um, probably about 4.30ish. Um, I have a dinner at 5ish, but anyway, central time. So I'll be back on this afternoon. If you're not following me, tap on the guy, the bottom right corner of your screen so that you get a notification as soon as I go live. This is the blog where we're introspective we ask the question about ourselves. We don't point blame. We don't transfer blame to others. We don't talk about all the wrong that's been committed to us, but we move forward from whatever, from whatever happened. And we ask ourselves, how can I be better? What's my part in it? Because that's really what it's about, your part. So thank you for accepting the challenge. I'll be back on this afternoon. Absolutely cannot wait to share with you guys. You've been awesome this morning. Make sure you share with your followers. I declare I will be able to catch you later. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Have a blessed day. You have a blessed day too. Don't forget, what do I affirm over your life today? I affirm prosperity, positivity, and most of all, productivity. You need to be productive today. So I'm getting off scope going to a nine o'clock meeting you guys you just excite me okay talk to you guys later be blessed bye-bye